Hi! Happy Friday again. I hope you've had an amazing week. I woke up quite early today, I think at like five, but I didn't start filming until maybe seven because I was posting some things on my Instagram. You saw me make my coffee and I'm gonna make a bagel in a second because I'm already a little bit peckish. But for today's video, I thought I would do a little like morning in my life and also a Q and A. So I put up an Instagram story and I asked if you would send me in some questions that I can answer today. So I'll sit down after I eat breakfast and start to do that. I'll also go through a little lounge room tour and and focus on my coffee table and things like that because I do get a lot of questions to continue the shop my apartment series and I've kind of neglected the coffee table just because it is difficult to say where every little thing is from because I have so many pieces all around and there's not like one specific store that I buy from like sometimes it will just be a gift store or Amazon some of the things are sold out or discontinued so I feel bad when people ask where they're from but I can try and find an alternative for you I'll just see when I go through it later and probably the main things that I'll focus on 
on are the coffee table books and also the little candles and decor items. I also have some exciting news. So I didn't film last Friday because me and my partner were going away for a little like weekend getaway. And it was in Northern New South Wales, like a cute little cabin in the bush, but it was also quite close to the beach. So we spent one of the days at the beach there, but wasn't expecting this at all. And he proposed to me. So now I am engaged, which is really weird to say because we've been together for quite a while and now it just feels so special. So I uploaded a little reel of the getaway on my TikTok and Instagram and you might've seen the little shot of the ring in there. So I am wearing it and it's so beautiful. It's like exactly the ring that I wanted, but it's a little bit big for my finger. So I do have to send it back and get resized this week, which is a little bit sad. I don't want to part with it, but I also don't want to lose it and have it slip off my finger. And then before he proposed that weekend, I also hurt my thumb on this hand really badly, which is my left hand. So I was doing laundry and I was trying to get the sheets out of the top loader that we have. And you know, when sheets get all tangled up and they're impossible to get out. So I was like pulling with all of my force to get the sheets out. And my hand just slipped off the sheet and plummeted straight into the dryer above the washing machine. So basically at like full force, my nail and thumb kind of hit the dryer and just like impacted my nail down into my nail bed. So I knew at the time that it was gonna be really bad because it was so painful. And since I had the gel nails on, I think that made it worse because since they're so strong, it kind of like forced my nail down into my finger instead of just breaking the nail like it normally would. And then I couldn't really see what was happening underneath the nail either. So I had to file off the gel, even when it was like super sensitive and painful to even touch. And now basically my entire nail has fallen off. So I don't have a nail on that finger, which is really gross because it just doesn't look good. And it's a real pain when I'm filming content and I'm trying to have my thumbs or all my fingers in the shot. So yeah, I've just covered it up with a bandaid and I hope that it grows back quickly. But I was laughing because this happened like a week before the proposal. And apparently my partner was thinking, oh my God, like, should I just postpone this proposal? proposal because her thumb is in such a state and she'll probably want to take pictures of the ring on that hand. But anyway, I don't care. I just thought it was funny that that happened right before. So yeah, I've got something very ugly on that hand and also very pretty, but that's just a little life update for you. And it's super exciting. I'll answer some more questions related to this later on. If I get some coming through on my Instagram or just leave any in the comments. I also feel weird in a way saying that I'm engaged because I also feel like I'm like 20 years old, even though I'm 28, I feel like your twenties go so quickly and I still feel like a child. Like I have my 10 year high school reunion in December this year and that just feels very surreal to me. Do you know what I mean? Like you have all of this excitement but you're also just like whoa okay like I'm at the age where people are just actually having babies and getting married all the time. But I'm very grateful for him and everyone in my life. I don't really show him on these vlogs because he doesn't like being on camera. It's kind of just a privacy thing so usually I'll just film when he's not home and when he's at work. But even if he is home it's okay like usually he's just in the background and I'll just focus the camera on me. Anyway, now I'm going to make some breakfast. So I'll show you that whole process and then I will get to the Q and A. Thank you. 
Hello again. So I'm going to go through the questions that are on my Instagram story and I will answer a few of them. So the first question that came through, which is a question that I get literally all the time is what do I do for work? Or also I will get asked how I afford this apartment or how I can like furnish everything so nicely when I'm by myself. And there's a couple of answers to this question. So firstly, I work in social media. I do content creation for my own channels and I'll work with brands and get paid through doing that. And I'll also do UGC content for brands. So which means I just make the content for them for their own pages or website and I don't have to actually post it on my page and then I also work for a company in Brisbane managing their social media so I do all of their content creation as well and I work there for four days out of the week so I'm sorry if you've heard me answer this before but a couple of new people here probably don't know what I do so I usually film for that company for three days and then I spend a day editing for them and then on Friday Saturday Sunday I do my own content creation I really love working in social media it's just just been an amazing opportunity and working for the company that I currently work for I have learned so many things so actually working in like a proper professional space as opposed to just doing my own work from home it's been really great for the last two years that I've been there to be involved in shoots and campaigns launches everything like that I would say that I'm a very creative person in general so I really love any sort of profession where you can just have creative freedom that way you can just test out what works and what you don't like and you can see your improvement along the way. So obviously my income can vary quite a lot from all those jobs that I'm doing on the side. So sometimes it can be really great or you can have months where you don't earn a lot. And then I just get kind of a more steady income from the company that I work for. To address the question of how I can afford so many nice things in this apartment, I know that some of the pieces that I have are quite expensive, but I would say also 50% of what I have in here is either from like Ikea, Kmart and cheaper places like that, Amazon too. So I kind of mix together cheaper and expensive things, but also a lot of of the bigger furniture items like my bed, dining table, um, dining chairs, bedside tables, they were a part of a gifted collaboration that I did with Life Interiors. So if I'm being completely transparent, obviously a lot of things are gifted to me as a content creator because brands want you to use their products in your videos and promote them essentially. Personally, I don't really get sent like an insane amount of things. Like I don't get sent a lot of products that I wouldn't actually use. It's usually just from brands that I have ongoing collaborations with. Final answer to that question which maybe some of you don't know I don't live by myself so I live with my partner and I have done for many years even though I know that it just looks like only a girl lives here because everything's like so pretty and pink and fluffy and cozy but he's just really good about like letting me take the reins on the interior styling and he basically just appreciates all the nice things that I have in here so the next question that I got which is sort of carrying on from the first one is how do you keep your place so clean and do you live with a man and if so does he help you clean and to answer that I know that a lot of my content is revolving around cleaning and keeping a really tidy space but I would not say that I'm the cleanest person Person on earth like when I do a Sunday reset video my apartment is actually genuinely messy and dirty it's just more like staying on top of it on a weekly basis so that I don't have to do like a month's worth of insane cleaning all in one day and as far as my partner he's probably more clean than I am so he doesn't really come in and like mess up the place he's just one of those people that doesn't like make a mess as he does things whereas if I'm cooking or doing something in the kitchen I'm probably like messing up the entire kitchen and then I'll go through and clean it from start to finish Whereas he kind of like has the mindset that you shouldn't make the mess in the first place so that you don't have to clean. However, we have been together for quite a while. So it's just like getting to know each other and learning to live in each other's space. Okay, so next question. I got a few about what my PhD was on when I did my postgraduate study. And if you didn't know, I spent eight years at university completing an undergraduate and PhD in chemical engineering. And I'm obviously not using that qualification right now. But I don't think I'm going to get into the full topic. But I don't think I'm going to get into the full topic of what my PhD was about because as you know, if you're studying postgrad, you are focusing on something like so super niche that probably 99% of the population would not care about. It was essentially a sustainable mining related topic. And if you've done engineering or chemical engineering, you'll know that mining practices is like a huge part of the degree. And that's a big industry that a lot of their graduates go into. From my experience, just doing my studies, it is very male dominated. And I know they're trying to get more women in like STEM degrees and things like that, but it still has a long way to go. And I don't really enjoy working in an all male workforce. So I'm very grateful that at the 
the moment in my social media job, it's basically a team of like 90% girls and women who I obviously find very easy to talk to and we have a lot of common interests. The next question is, if you could choose anywhere else to live in the world aside from Australia, where would you go? And this is hard because I always get super homesick when I'm not in Australia. Like I do love traveling, but about three weeks in, I'm like, okay, that's enough. I need to go home. But I don't know, that's a really hard question because I don't think I would ever move out of Australia. If I had to say somewhere, I would probably say Italy just because that's where half of my family is from and I really love visiting there. But I don't think I would do that for more than like a year. And also I would struggle because I don't speak the language. The next question is, where do you get your inspiration from? I also see a lot of questions of people saying, what is your interior design style called? And I don't really know how to answer this question because I don't know what the name of it would be or what it's called. So if you have any ideas then please let me know. But I get so much inspiration from TikTok and Pinterest. You can go and follow my Pinterest board because I just pin random home interior inspo that I like there. And then on TikTok, I follow so many home accounts or just girls that create similar content to me and they post their beautiful apartments and homes. If I see certain little things that I like from these videos, I will just take aspects and integrate them into my own apartment. It honestly just takes time to curate your own style. And I would just suggest like slowly into integrating in little pieces that you like. And over time it just evolves and slowly comes together. I love incorporating a lot of natural tones. So I'll have marble mixed with wood and tiles. And then obviously I really love having real plants around my apartment. I am lucky that I live in a very sunny spot. So the plants are thriving. But yeah, other than that, I would say just try and find people online who have similar style to what you love and see how they're kind of putting things together and what's working because that's exactly what I do. The next question is what are your favorite cleaning products? So I feel like this is something that gets really overcomplicated. Like I love using fairy dishwashing liquid on so many different things. Like you can use it for your dishes, for your shower screen, for your actual shower, for the stove top. It's quite highly concentrated and you can get an antibacterial one as well. Other than that, I do use the pink stuff and gumption cream cleaner and also Jif cream cleaner. I feel like those slightly abrasive cleaners are good for when you're trying to like buff things out of your stove top or if you want to clean the bottom of pots and pans and things like that. And then also I love the scrub daddy cleaning products like the sponges, the scrub mummy. And then I have the scrub mummy sitting in the daddy caddy holder in my sink. They also have a damp duster, which is really good. And I use their magic erasers. So if you have a stone bench top, magic erasers are really good if you have like red wine stains or coffee stains. They're also good on your walls if you have little marks or scratches and scuffs that you wanna buff out. As far as like multi-purpose spray, I just try and get like natural ones from Woolies and Coles. I'm just always trying new ones. And if I like them, then I'll stick with them for a while. So the next question is, what is your favorite scent? And I feel like I'm quite picky with this because I get a headache from so many perfumes and colognes. So I would rather just not use one than be like suffering all day with that scent lingering. So the ones that I wear pretty regularly, I love the Valentino Donna Born in Roma. It has like black currant fruity, woody notes. And it's not like sickly sweet, but it just has a really juicy, yummy scent. I think it also has notes of jasmine in there. So it smells a little bit fresh too. That one is definitely one of my favorites. It smells delicious. And then other than that, I love the Byredo scents in particular, Gypsy Water and Mojave Ghost. Gypsy Water is like their OG fragrance that everyone has. And it's a really musky smell. I just love it so much. I think it's addictive. And I know that it's probably like so overused now, but I don't care. It's still one of my favorites. And then Mojave Ghost is described as woody and floral. So it has notes of magnolia, sandalwood and cedarwood, which I love. I've almost depleted the bottle that I have because they are quite expensive, but I think they're so worth it. And then another woody fragrance, which I like, which I know is like so overhyped is Santel 33. I just can't get over it. Like it's such a sexy scent and I feel like it smells different on everyone. And I love when men wear it as well. So Santel 33 says it has notes of sandalwood and cedarwood again. So I think I definitely love woody fragrances. It also has some spicy, leathery and musky notes. So yeah, I would say usually the ones that I gravitate towards are woody and musky. I don't really like super floral fragrances. I feel like they can be quite sickening. I am also quite partial to vanilla and caramel scents. I feel like they're just very yummy. So yeah, those are the ones that I basically rotate through each day, whatever vibe I'm feeling. Okay, so now for the little lounge room tour, I'll just take you through where everything is from. And I will also link the products in the description. So first, Firstly, this lounge, I'm telling you, is so comfortable. And it's surprising that it's from Ikea because a lot of the Ikea lounges are really like rigid and stiff. And this one's not. It's like 
the perfect level of soft and firm. You could sleep on this. Like I've had naps here so many times. It's just really, really comfy. And I specifically wanted one that had like these cushions at the back of the lounge instead of just like fixed cushions, if you know what I mean. Because I feel like this makes it look like the cloud couch and you can basically put whatever inserts you want inside these covers. So if you wanna change them to like even fluffier looking down cushions you can. Whereas I just have the ones that came with the lounge currently and they're pretty comfy. You can also take all the covers off this lounge and wash it if you want. It is a little bit of a task, but I have changed the covers before because I used to have this in gray. And then I decided that I just wanted to brighten up my lounge room and I changed all the covers to white. And some people are like, why would you have a white couch? Like that's so silly. It's just gonna get so dirty. And it does have like a few marks on it, but I don't really care. I just love the look of it. I think it looks chic and it just makes my whole lounge room looks super bright. So most of the time I'll have like all of these blankets spread out over the couch. And these are literally just from Target. They're like those super soft kind of mink blankets. So yeah, I'll just wash these all the time and have them sitting on the lounge. This really fluffy one is actually from Adairs. When I used to work there, I got it on sale and they do usually release them every year. They'll come out with like new colors and stuff. So now that we're going into summer, I'm not sure if they'll be available, but you could try and see if they have any like discounted ones from when we were in winter. They also sell them at West Elm and a few other places. Just look up faux fur blanket. So other than that, the cushions are all from Homey and I love this brand so much. Like I feel like all of the cushions they make just look amazing. They just get the vibe. They get the color combinations. I really wanted this like beige mixed with the brown and green tones. Again, just sticking with the natural color palette. And then I have like some really colorful ones spread around through my apartment. And this one's from Kip & Co. So that's basically my lounge area. And this is called the Gron Lid Couch. And I've got the four seater with the double chase. So you can get it in many different configurations. You can get like a two or three seater and you don't have to get a chase if you don't want. It is actually a little bit big for this apartment because when we moved in here, I was like, oh wow, like it's not gonna fit. And it's kind of pushed up to the walls as much as it can be. But I do love this couch so much. So if you're looking for one from Ikea, I would definitely check this one out. This cute little chair behind me is from Focus On Furniture. And I got it when we were in our old apartment and I kind of needed a little chair in our bedroom because it was quite a big bedroom. So it was just sitting in the corner and it would basically just be the chair that I put all of my clean laundry on before I was ready to put it away. But since we moved here, it wouldn't fit in our bedroom. So we just kind of like put it out here in this little corner and I usually just dress it up with a colorful cushion. This rug is literally like my prized possession. I love it so much. It's from Miss Amara, obviously. All my rugs I think are from there and this is the Annika rug it's called. It's made from wool, so it is quite expensive, but I just love the pastel tones in there and it kind of just looks like clouds in the sky. You guys probably know about this lamp. It's from Ikea and it's their Fardo lamp and it also comes in a smaller size, which I have in my bathroom. But I just think the orb is so cute and I put my colored globes inside obviously so I just usually put it on like baby pink or pastel colors in general. So these plants I just get from Bunnings and one is an ivy plant and the other one is a fiddle leaf fig. This one is the fiddle leaf fig and this is really hard to keep alive so if you're like a first time plant buyer I probably would not recommend getting this one. However if you want a plant that literally just looks good under any conditions then I would get an ivy plant. Okay so now for all the little things Things on my coffee table. I'll just quickly run through where generally everything is from, but I'll link specific things in the description. So I don't have like one place that I get coffee table books from. I will literally just find one that I like the look of. It's usually online or if I see it on Pinterest or in someone else's place and I really like the look of it, I'll just search the title of the book and then see wherever the cheapest place I can get it from online is. So this one, I just really loved the imagery and the blue on the front, which I don't really have many blue books and accessories. Another place that I get a lot of the books you see on my coffee table like this one is from Mag Nation. So I just get like assorted magazines. If I think that the current issue they're selling looks cool, I will basically just look on like the fashion, home styling, interior pages on these magazine websites. And this is a lot cheaper than getting actual coffee table books. And they're obviously nice to look through as well. They've got good images and like really nice stories in them. So that's where like all of these ones are from that you see that are a little bit thinner. They're just magazines. 
This book you've probably seen many times before because there's a whole series of these books that are like different cities or places around the world. So I really loved the Capri one because obviously it's in Italy and I love the orange and pink notes together. And then it has this beautiful gold on the front as well. So these ones are quite expensive, but I feel like it is such a statement for your coffee table. You can get them in so many different colors and styles and the pictures inside are such good quality. This is another like really well-known coffee table book and it's the Live Beautiful book by Athena Calderoni and this is all about like home styling and interiors and then I also have her other coffee table book which is called Cook Beautiful. This one I got recently you might have seen it up on my kitchen bench and it's called The Dinner Party. I just loved it because it has all of this kind of retro style photography and it has really cool recipes inside as well. This is another style of coffee table books that I'm obsessed with. They're any photo books by Slim Ahrens. He was a photographer back in the like 60s, 70s, 80s I think and he basically said that he wanted to photograph really well attractive places and people and this is where I get a lot of inspiration for my wall art as well so those are the main ones this is also a magazine this is the pop magazine of spring summer 23 so moving on to some of the stone accessories that I have all of the coasters that are shaped like these cute little flowers are from Il Pietra I also have this one that looks a little bit like a cloud and I use this all the time in my content these big marble cubes are actually solid and they're very heavy I love them so much so I have this one which I usually use on my coffee table and then I have this beautiful one that's green onyx and I usually put this on my TV cabinet. These little boxes are filled with some incense that I like. This one is the Maison Balzac and this one is by the Scent Studio. So I'll usually put those inside this cute tiny incense holder. It's just made of amber glass and this is also by Maison Balzac. This tray I get so many questions about and unfortunately I don't think it's available anymore. I got it as a part of a collaboration I did with I Love Linen and it was from this beautiful ceramic artist that they worked with. I can try and link her Instagram in the description but I'm not sure whether she sells them anymore. You guys probably know I'm obsessed with these from LH Candles. I've literally been buying them for years in different colors and scents and they're all coconut and soy wax which is what I make sure all of my candles are. So yeah I really love the size of these. I think they look cute and they're definitely a statement on your coffee table. This tray I know a lot of people love and it was actually just from a random gift store. So I think if you just search wooden footed tray or something like that you could probably find something similar. This cute little drinks table is from West Elm and I just like having it here for if you're sitting like on this side of the lounge and the little ottoman with all of the tassels is from Kmart and so is the disco ball. Okay these artworks on the wall I've had for a little while. I love the tones in them because I think they tie really nicely with the cushions I have on the couch and I mentioned earlier that I really love all of Slim Aaron's photographs and this is also two of his. So if you literally just look up Slim Aaron's prints they're sold at so many different places even on like Etsy and Amazon and things like that and then you can just put them into a frame from like Kmart or Officeworks. Okay so I think that's basically everything in my lounge room. I hope that you guys liked this little tour and let me know if you think that I missed anything or if you also want me to answer some other questions but thank you so much for watching and being here. I hope you liked this more chatty video as well. I hope you have an amazing weekend and I will see you next week. Mm -hmm.